Hello and thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how to do an oil and oil filter change on this 2006 Saturn View. This Saturn View has a Honda six cylinder engine in it and the reason I'm telling you that is because if you have a different engine in there you'll be using a different filter and it might be in a different location. To get started the first thing we have to do is to get this vehicle off the ground. See I have it up on ramps. Once it's off the ground, the next thing before we look at anything else is safety. I have two jack stands under here, just in case something should give. And I have the back wheels chucked. Once the vehicle's secured, what you'll need is the oil and the filter. Now the manual on this vehicle says to use 5W20 synthetic but the original owner who had this vehicle always put regular oil in it and since I've owned it I've been using the same now this fan filter definitely isn't the best you can get so as far as comments down below about the fan fan filter you can let that go this is what I was able to get delivered so I took the fan filter and I change my oil every two to three thousand miles after that and you'll need something to capture the oil I have this 33 gallon barrel that I cut the bottom off I have this uh, five quart container that I often use this is in place of not having a regular container to catch it in I do have one but I showed you there's other ways of doing this you can also get a five gallon bucket and cut it down to fit under the uh, vehicle next you'll need something to take the oil filter off with especially if you had it done at the shop they usually put it on too tight years back i got away from using the typical oil wrenches i had all different sizes and i saw these in a flea market one time they had to open up jars and i've used them to take filters off they're easy uh, one size fits all they're adjustable one's just a little thicker than the other but i'm going to look online and see if i can find them online if you're interested in purchasing these they'll be in one of my affiliate links down below and then you'll need a wrench to take the bolt out of the oil pan and it looks like a 17 millimeter wrench fits on this you could either use a wrench or a socket i prefer using a wrench over the socket now to get started as i'm getting in position under here one of the advantages of doing this yourself is that you could check underneath and see what else your vehicle may need i get into this bucket under the oil pan get my wrench on the wrench I'm using has a ratchet. You don't need the ratchet part, but it makes it a little easier. This isn't moving. This is really tight. If you have a, a bolt that's tight like this, you can hook up another wrench to give you a little extra leverage. Oh, even with this. This isn't budget. This isn't budget. Let me try it again. I'm going to get a breaker bar and put a socket on it and get it off with that. 
want you have to not lose pair of gloves when it hurt. If your vehicle's been running, you gotta watch this oil will be hot. This oil's only lukewarm now. I had the engine running. It's been a while back. This oil looks like it was never changed. Now this was only about three, a little over 3,000 miles back. I don't know why this is so black. And I'll just let that finish dripping. Now to get to the uh, filter. See this flap over here? The two plastic bolts or fittings that go in there were taken off, never put back on. So when you're driving, that'll be flapping around. Incredible. Again, why to do this yourself? I'm gonna let this finish dripping out and then I'll get back to it. Years back, I always did my own oil changes. But as time went on, I started using Monroe. And they always had a promo like $19.99 or $25.99 for the oil change and when you break down what it cost you for the oil for the filter the aggravation to get it under the uh vehicle and so on figure yeah, for 20 25 dollars i was saving maybe five ten dollars at the most now the last time i went they pulled a fast one on me they said that the bolt this bolt here was stripped and i said well how could it be stripped you guys are the only ones that changed the oil on this thing he goes well you know, you have a hundred and, uh, what was it, 119,000 miles on the vehicle at the time, and all the times you change the oil, you know, these bolts, they go. I said, well, the only reason they would go is if you uh, use a pneumatic tool on them or the wrong size wrench. Well, needless to say, $9, $5, $5.99, $9.99, oh, I had the receipt. You know what? I can't remember. So let's call it $6. So $6 later, they sold me this bolt. Now, that kind of aggravated me, so today I did my own oil change. I couldn't get this bolt out of there. I showed you the method with the two wrenches, that wasn't working. I had to use a socket and a breaker bar to get this off and give it all my might, and I was turning it the right direction. Look at this, and I didn't mar this up because I had the right size socket on. Look what that looks like. This is brand new. They changed it one time in there. I know I didn't do this because my wrenches didn't slip off. If my wrench slipped off, I would say it was a possibility I did this. But look at that. Tell me that wasn't put on with a pneumatic uh, tool and that it wasn't on too tight. I'm not a uh, Hercules, but let me tell you, I had a tough time getting this out. Had me questioning whether this was a reverse thread on it for a second or two. This is the filter they put on. I don't know if it's good, bad, and different. It can't be worse than the Fram that I'm putting on right now, but that'll be it. Unless I have to change oil in the middle of the winter and I got to lay out in the snow, I'm not going back to any of these places again. You know, if you catch the right mechanic there, well, most of the guys there, they're probably not mechanics, but if you catch the right worker, mechanic or not, the job is going to be done right. And for years I went there because like I said, I stopped doing it myself for the ninth and once in a while I even saw $17.99 but I didn't need the oil change but this is what you can get when you take it to a shop so I'm letting that oil drip out of there I'm going to put the new filter on one thing when installing the new filters you want to get some fresh oil and rub it along this rubber gasket over here it helps seal it now because this filter gets installed straight up and down on the new filter I'm going to put some oil in here because when your engine first starts, there's oil in here that's going to be pumped out. It can't hurt to have the oil already in this filter. Now, on my, other vi on my blazer, the filter goes this direction. So there's no way for me to get oil in it that way. And I just screw it on and fill it up and start it up. I'm just waiting for that oil to finish dripping so I don't have a mess under there. I'm going to wipe all the surfaces clean, 
First thing to put on is the oil filter. Oh, let me show you how that wrench works. When using this wrench, get a better view here. When using this wrench, this slips in and out. And if you slip it over the uh, filter or jaw lid, that's what this was intended for, tighten it up and this will turn, you turn it this direction, it'll grab, get a little closer and it'll grab. And when you have to go the other direction, you just flip it around. My finger's out of the way here. And you can see how this is grabbing it and it turns it. I find this to be one of the most useful tools in my toolbox. It fits any size, doesn't slip, gives you a good grip. And the other, the red one I have has a longer handle if you need more leverage. And if you get oil on it like I just did, you just wipe it off with a rag and you're all set to go again. All right, I have this all cleaned up around here now. Ready to put the uh, drain plug back in. And I notice this is pretty marred up over here. I don't know if the camera could pick this up. This looks like it might have had an impact wrench coming in from this. Just picture an impact wrench coming in and slipping and just hitting over there while it's spinning. Anyway, I'm going to get this plug in. You notice I have it cleaned up. And you want to have it cleaned. You don't want to have any... Well, I can, looks like I missed a spot here. You don't want to have any debris around this when you're putting it back in. And if there's any oil that's coming out, you'll know it's the new oil that's just dripping. Now, when this plug gets tightened in, if you don't have the specs on it, which I don't have, usually I would tighten it up. I would turn it in by hand, make sure I'm not cross-threading it. Tighten it up and give it one quarter turn. That's usually enough for drain plugs. That's how I've been doing it for years. And then the oil filter goes up in there. I can't see what the camera's videoing. And I should have a view of that. Once I get that oil filter in, I don't have the buttons for over here. But these guys took it off in the shop and never put it back together. I'm just going to put a zip tie in there. Right here, if the camera's getting this. I'm going to put a zip tie, go through there and hold it up and zip it on the bottom just to keep this from vibrating when you're on the road. Once I get this done, I'll be adding oil from the top end. Oh, and on this car, I haven't seen this before. It even tells you engine oil. You don't want to make a mistake and drain the transmission fluid when you're going after the engine oil. One tool I forgot to mention that you'll need is a funnel. So on this engine the oil refill is right in the front and again this is the honda v6 engine so yours might be different the dipstick to check the oil level is right here right in the front you want to check your owner's manual to see how much oil is required and remember in the manual will tell you how much oil it takes with the filter change and without the filter change so if you didn't change the filter you don't want to overfill this what I'm going to do now, I'm just waiting for this funnel to, to dry out. I'm going to reinstall the cap, shut this hood, pull out the jack stands on the bottom, pull the chucks out from the back wheels, and take this for a short drive. Then I'm going to put it up on the ramps again to see if there's any leaks. If there aren't any leaks, then it's ready to go. If there's any leaks, I, I might have to tighten it a little bit more. Again, you don't want to over tighten that drain plug because you can't strip that and that's and that opens up another can of worms. The oil filter, I tighten it by hand as tight as I can get it. You want it, you want to keep your hands as clean as possible so they don't slip. And once I get it tight, I snug it at least a quarter to a half a turn. You can use the wrench on it, even that one that I showed you before, but you got to be careful because those filters will crush if you tighten them too much. And that's a wrap. If you have any questions or comments, post them down below. If you found this video useful, share it with someone else who might be able to use it. Be sure to give it a like. If you haven't done so already, subscribe. Hit that Joe Z button to subscribe. And not to miss any of my new videos as I upload them, hit that bell icon. Oh, and I almost forgot. 
the oil that you take from your engine, any place that sells oil, Advance Auto, AutoZone, some of the car washes that do oil changes, they'll take your oil. There's no fee to drop it off. They just don't want it mixed with gas or anything else. So in my area, they prefer to have it back in the oil containers. But if you have a milk jug, you could put it in there because all they do, they take it and they dump it into a barrel. And again, there's no fee for that. There's not a problem getting rid of the old oil. And if you're in an area where you have people burning waste oil for their shops, this isn't the season for it, but there are people that'll take the waste oil because they have waste oil burners that they use in their shops. Just wanted to mention that. And until next time, stay well and safe driving.